You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Live in five, four, three, two. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. What's up, Show? What is happening, sir? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I don't know. I think the le- this week is longer than last week was. You Why mean, is that? It, it's only Tuesday. It's always Tuesday when we record, homie. I know, but my God, did Monday last for like three days? <laughs> this is the second Monday of the week. I know. It's, it's crazy. Well, you know what they actually call Tuesday, right? Monday's ugly little sister. Right. But, but sisters, but the ugly sister needs love too. That's true. And if you got At the right wingman, he can take care of that for you. So I said back in the day, that was the motto. <laughs> so hey, um, I digress. You got a couple interesting topics with us today, and uh, before you uh take the floor, I'd like to go over a couple things that I found interesting in the news. Uh, okay two things one is ridiculous and the other is sublime so the, this first article um it is a museum to fix waxwork smack down by the rock that's the title and basically if you saw that so you know that this french museum is urging or is, is urgently trying to fix their wax statue of Dwayne Johnson and he complained about it. Not only did fans, but I guess it uh, it took off. He got a hold of it. And, you know, wow. All I can say is wow, because, um, yeah, that. Not to like him. And, you know, for our peoples at home, let me see if I can pull this image up. Because this is, laugh with us, kids. Laugh with us. Boom. Yeah. I, I, looks, I, I don't know about that. looks me. like Mr. Clean. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Clean, fresh off of Wall Street. Yeah. That's, yeah, that looks nothing like The Rock. It, it makes me want to mop floors right now. Yes. So <laughs> I suddenly smell lemon. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. Not only did they not get the face accurate, uh, he complained about the skin tone. Yeah, that is a little light, even for The Rock. And, you know, speaking for the light-skinned community, come on now, it's more than two shades in the world. Right, and he kind of, it kind of looks like a cross between Vin Diesel and The Rock. Ooh, and I bet you somebody said that in the comments, and that prompted him to... Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, really, like, maybe the artist, like, had a picture of The Rock that he started, and then somebody mixed it up with Vin Diesel, and poof, there you go. Wow, I, I, yeah, I, to the people uh, that are looking at this for the first time and laughing out there, we laugh too. So, yeah, oh, it's yeah. true. And I also, I seen this morning too that they also did uh, Little Wayne, Little Wayne, and mess it up too. And Little Wayne said something. Mm. I I didn't see that picture. Although right. it looked closer to Little Wayne than it actually did, but it was li- a lot lighter. And did they at least get yeah. the tats in place? Well, I mean, I didn't like compare tat for tat, but yeah, it was. <laughs> it, it was you know he had quite a few tattoos on there, but uh, it, it yeah it, no it. I, I was not. I was just trying to get you to say tat for tat. That was cool. Uh, the Hollywood Museum in Branson has some pretty good uh but some of theirs don't look like the celebrities either 
I've I've been to the wax museum in uh, California too, and you know they're not on point either. Yeah, I mean, some for real of them though, are pretty are fairly close, but from an artist's perspective though, and this is for real, you can't be a hundred percent accurate. You just can't, no matter what, because you lose something in in, in a still image. Well, yeah, that too, but it, it there's just nothing like the real thing. Like that True, but, there are, but, but there are there are uh artists out there that can spot on do a portrait. There are yeah. tattoo artists that can spot on do a portrait. And not everybody can do it, but I would but be employing the ones that could. A portrait though is gonna be different from a statue. A statue can look good from one angle, but if you tilt the angle slightly, it can be like, I don't know, that's a little off. You know, so true, but I, they I would, get it. I, I think somebody that could do a portrait if they had the, I guess the the sculpting talent, mm -hmm. you know, because there are some wax etches out there that really are fairly, you know, ninety nine point nine percent close to oh, the yeah. real thing. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and there hopefully, are some hopefully like they'll that get it right. Clean rock that. <laughs> way yeah, off base they need to put that one in a white t-shirt and uh put a mop or a broom in his hand let's call it mr clean yeah now that was ridiculous this is sublime you're gonna get a kick out of this all right people try to get over people try to get over three they men do. created a fake country to steal millions in covid funds I know some of y'all that went over your heads. Did he say country? Yes, they created a whole country in order to steal COVID funds. Now, here's how they got caught. Now, it says here, um, an $11.5 million scheme that prosecutors say involved a non-existent country and its fictional consulate ended last week with fraud convictions against a Wisconsin man and three Illinois co-conspirators. Uh, the federal grand jury in August returned an 18 count indictment indictment charging Aziz Hassan Bay, who also went undercover as Chauncey Hooks of Milwaukee, Latiz Osiris Bay, aka Devon Robinson, Minister Zakar Ali, aka Anthony Allen, and Divine Seven L, aka Mark Stevens or Mark Nesbitt, depending on what part of the scheme, uh, with a conspiracy to commit fraud and mail and wire fraud. Aziz Bay and 7L also were charged with money laundering. So they had it going, but they got greedy. Uh, through a variety of schemes, the defendants attempted to fraudulently pocket about $11.5 million from two federal programs designed to help businesses that were struggling through COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the, the indictment and prosecutors charged, and they said uh, the, during the week, the week-long trial, that the defendants targeted loans from economic injury disaster loan programs and the Paycheck Protection Program which was put in place to help businesses through COVID. And in a nutshell, without reading this whole thing, basically they pretended to be a country so that a consulate located in Wisconsin of that country could get funds because they were not able to travel back and forth through COVID. And um, I'm going to go on down here, skip the nitty gritty of, you know, all that i want to tell you about everything that they bought where was the country um supposedly let me see here okay it says here the consulate of al Morocco. it doesn't say where they were located at hmm, that's interesting it's a fictional consulate office uh located in wisconsin wow and I wonder how long people fell for this before they, you know. And it says, during the trial, the State Department testified that Al Morak is not a real country recognized by the U.S. and that it has no diplomatic status. You would think somebody would have checked that before they would, you know, cut them some checks. 
Uh, prosecutors noted that the address for, that the defendants use for Almorock is actually a duplex in Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, now, as a result of the defendants' false and misleading statements and omissions, the Wisconsin Department of Motor Vehicles issued titles to Bay and the consulate for multiple vehicles free and clear of any liens held by the lenders. They got over. Um, it says here, the foursome shared proceeds from the fraud among themselves and some of it used to buy luxury items such as jewelry and cars. Um, I want to see what kind of cars they bought. Wait, wait. They got loans that were covered by businesses. Government also charged the defendants with defrauding the U.S. Small Business Administration out of seven hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. They're scheduled to be sentenced on February first. Let's see here. Oh, and in an unrelated matter, I like this part at the bottom. In an unrelated matter, Bay is also charged with illegally possessing a machine gun. That case is expected to be charged and go to trial next year. Okay. I want to call so, them geniuses, but at the same time, these are idiots. These are idiots. Either they are downright the smartest people walking the planet, or the government, U.S. government employs the dumb, most stupidest people on the planet. Maybe a little bit of both. Uh, I yeah. guess look who's yeah. the president. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't even know what to say about this. Um, <laughs> you know, after the first several hundred thousand dollars, maybe I would have got out. I don't know. That crack kept calling them, so. Um, you know, you can, somebody keeps putting money in your bank account. But you had to know that sooner or later somebody was going to question this place. Oh, yeah. I mean. Maybe they thought they were going to leave leave the country, <laughs> go back to wherever you said they were from. Al Marat. Never heard that of that place. It. Yeah. That place. Somebody it, somebody that works in one of these government countries was probably like, you know what? My church is going to go on a mission, and it sounds like this country is so poor. Let's go to Al Marat. And then they found out that there was no such place. They found I'm, out it's close to Wisconsin. Yeah. How, how many times can you say, hey, Siri, where's Al Marat? I oh do not have goodness. that location. It's in a duplex in Wisconsin. <laughs> I know. Uh, MapQuest is sending you <laughs> Green Bay. <laughs> they they built a they built a uh uh Sims universe with that country. Wow. I you know just just for shits and giggles, I'm going to follow this some more. February 1st is when the um, the sentencing goes down. I want to hear these guys' plea. Just they, so they've they've already been convicted. Yes. The oh, okay. Sentencing is February 1st. So yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested if they have to pay it. I'm sure they have to pay it all back. Oh, you know they do. And you know uh, they ain't got they ain't got at least half of it. They ain't got it. No, nah. if not more. And whoever whoever they were living with, I'm sure all those assets have been frozen. Yeah. And all that good stuff. But hey, you live and you learn. Hey, they lived high for a little while. That high life. Get on them. Show. Yes, Talk sir. to me about Will and Jada. Take it away. What about them? <laughs> that, that's kind of what I want to say, man, because. Besides all the memes that are going around. Damn funny, uh, by the way. Damn, they are. And, and my clip, I still got them in the clip. I have an empty. I, clip I was getting ready to say, so. if if you're not Kevin Manning, Richard Kearney, or Ryan Pulley, you probably don't know what we mean. But we've got some memes going around, and Big Show, man, bravo to you. <laughs> you brung it strong throughout this whole Will and Jada thing. You brung it strong. Props to you. Oh yeah, yeah. I like I said, I still got some more bullets in there just in case. Hey, <laughs> but that I'll one say you this. posted the other day where you you won the day, you won the last battle. I'm I got I got lucky. The there. I got lucky. I'm there. gonna win the war, but you won the battle. Okay, <laughs> that was that was pretty good. 
I, I had to player three had to enter the game. <laughs> you I, know, I uh I mean my thoughts on it are Yeah, yeah. Over overall, who really fucking cares? But evidently the the American public does. I think we discussed this during the Oscar episode, you know, mm-hmm. uh toxic their toxic relationship. Yes. Um but then her coming out saying that they haven't really been married since I don't know what they say 2016. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. I mean, you know, like first of all, why a, first of all, why do why are you even who care like why? She's why trying to stay relevant. To know all this? She's trying to stay relevant. It's the Hollywood way. She can't be like yeah. every other actress and get in a movie and just, you know, act her butt off and get accolades for that. She's going to keep her ass at home, right? And say, I'm going to tell everything about my life. You're well, right. I think we that, don't care. I think that uh, the just like Will is getting ostracized in Hollywood for his actions at Oscars, mm-hmm. um, I believe everything that's led up to that point with her and him. I think her whole entanglement issue that she had, uh, when was that? Um, that was right around 2017, 18, somewhere in Iran, right? Or am I uh, tripping? No, 19, wasn't it? It was only like a year, year it and was a half before, before the Oscars. But I mean, but it was way before COVID. COVID was in 2020. I, I, I'll take your word for it. At least a year or so before that was, you know, we'll say 18, 19, somewhere in that arena. Okay. Not that it's relevant, but, you know, <laughs> ever since then, I think America kind of put her in a particular pile, so to speak, you know, a category yeah. where she couldn't get a job in Hollywood, even if she tried, you mm-hmm. know, and now Will has basically ostracized himself by doing it. I find it actually comical. It's like uh, it's like watching a really bad reality TV show. You know, it's I mean, just like what's going to happen there. If you go back to Will for a second, and this is my take on it, when you said that he's ostracized himself, if you look at every step he's done, has been the wrong thing. Through the entanglement thing, to me, I think he went out like a punk. And then to take it out, whatever frustration, rage, whatever was inside him, on Chris Rock for telling a joke that wasn't even really that good. Wrong thing to do. And now throughout this whole thing, you know, she's talking about, well, Will's read it. He supports me. Will, I think you need to speak up and speak your mind. She's not your wife anymore. If you're not that together, like she's been your wife for a while, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Husband and wives live together. Yes, supposed to. Supposed to, yeah. And and they definitely don't go around talking about, oh, I don't live with my husband. Uh, we ain't been together in years. Mm-hmm. And if they do, that's because the word divorce creeps in there. Separation, right. something like that. Right. Um, uh, it is not, it, it, it's, it's no longer a marriage when you don't treat it like a marriage i don't even see it as i don't even think they have like a business relationship you know look how messed up their kids are i mean this is an ongoing issue all the way from a long for a long time i mean yes you know them i i i think that they put we are this perfect couple we we never argue. We always understand one another. Blah 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 blah. Out in the public eye for so long that the lie finally caught up to him. Um, yeah, I can see that. And and now we're in the age where information is instantaneous. Uh, you know, people are. You know, it's like watch, watching a bad car wreck. I mean, you know, you have all the rubbernecks. People want to see. And delve into their BS. What I'm afraid is like we're going to one day read something and it's going to say that Will Smith killed himself or some shit like mm. that because, you know, he can't take the pressure or he, you know, 
where he's going to be chased on live TV driving a white Bronco. I mean, anything of those things can happen, you know, from what's going on. They both need counseling. They both need help. They both need to separate from one another forever. Separate for real. Yeah, forever, though. You know, yeah. stop associating yourself with with him. You know, uh, that's great that she was in love with Tupac, but it doesn't sound like Tupac loved her. Tupac didn't give a damn about her. Right. Um, but... That's my thing, you know. I just, I, I, I think it's nonsense, you know, that we're dealing with. Um, and I'm curious what, uh, what other things are being, you know, our attention being taken away from, such as the war over in Israel. Yeah, our attention has been uh, targeted move towards things that we don't really need to move towards so when the dust settles something else is going to come out mark my words it's getting ready to happen it yeah. sucks but it's getting ready to happen but uh, yeah that's my little two cents on that but the memes will not stop I guarantee you alright um, I'm going to have to uh, put a few bullets in my six shooter and uh <laughs> come out with something too. One of these episodes, we should just do all of our memes and post them. <laughs> you never know. At the end of this episode, I might post what we have. <laughs> oh, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you watch to the end. <laughs> all right, my brother. You know we like sports because we're men. And we're getting ready to talk about the National Football League. But before we do that, next week, got a very special show lined up. And this is for all the listeners, no matter which format you're listening on, drop us a line, be it in the comments or uh, send us an a email at the slightly warp podcast at yahoo.com. And uh, I want you to tell me your goat who you perceive as the goat in the NFL in the NBA in boxing in golf and do we want to throw tennis in there I mean we can all right we'll throw tennis in there we're diverse uh, so four sports football basketball boxing and tennis yeah okay unless you want to throw another you want to throw another sport in there and make it an uneven five it doesn't have to be even no that that's fine yeah i mean um, i could get i i could give you my goats and three of them right now no nah, no nah, gotta we'll, wait till next week gotta we'll wait till, till next week. week but the reason why this came up is because uh you know as as we do at lunch we talk at work and uh goats in the nba came up because the regular season has is upon us now in the NBA, and uh, somebody First mentioned LeBron tonight, James. Right? Yes, somebody mentioned LeBron James. Y'all know how I feel about LeBron James if you watch this show. And I broke it down to this person, and I told him like this: All right, he's a Laker now. That's great. Name some great Lakers: Kareem, Magic, um, Elgin Baylor, um, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant. All right, we'll just take those four. And I said, there's a debate amongst those four alone on who's the greatest Laker. So if you're not the greatest player on your own team, you're not the GOAT, period. That pretty much ended that debate. How old was this person that you were debating? Around my age. I think... The goat debate's always going to land on the 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 genre of the game that you grew up watching. The kids nowadays that say LeBron is the goat didn't grow up watching Kobe Bryant. The kids that said Kobe Bryant was the goat didn't grow up watching Michael Jordan. Those that say Michael Jordan is the goat didn't grow up watching Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. So. 
I, I and, think it really depends on the That's going to be part of our, mm-hmm. our, our topic next week because there is a lot that goes into it. But again, LeBron cannot be mentioned because if you're not the greatest player on your own team. LeBron can be mentioned because he he is the goat of one of the goats, I would say. I mean, I, you he he has a debate to being the goat of this era. Mm. That that argument is on the table for this era. True, Steph Curry. Um, what what we'll, we'll discuss talk about? Next. We'll, we'll discuss we, that. That might be a little bit longer of a show next week, but I'm looking forward. Well, to that it. that's the entire topic for next week's show. So you know, hey, we got we got all day. But well, before we jump into the NFL, I have one other topic. Since Halloween's coming up before our next episode, you know, we'll mm-hmm. all have experienced Halloween. Top five scary movies Ooh. favorites. Ooh. Wow. Um now, um, there's no prerequisite or anything. It can be a, a slasher or it can be a thriller or anything like that, right? Scary movie. Oh, no. I think I. I mean, whatever horror genre. All you right, want to say right, zombie, and a lot of people haven't seen that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say Z O M B I. That that's how it 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 was a, a kind of a B movie back in the day, but trust me. That one freaked me out to a certain degree. Uh, the Exorcist, the original, back in the day, that was a scary movie. I'd love me some Alien, the original. That one was a scary movie. Um, Dog Soldiers, if anybody's seen that movie, it's a werewolf movie, even though it's called Dog Soldiers. I love that movie. That's a guilty pleasure movie right there because it's got a lot going on in it. And a fifth one, let me think. Um, there's so many, it just really depends, but those are right off the top of my head. I'm surprised like you didn't go with the classic, like Halloween, the The, original, you know, the traditional slasher movie lost favor with me a long time ago because it seems like it just keeps going and going kind of like I didn't mention any of the Saw movies. The That's first one, it was very innovative, and it's like, oh, he's not killing them. He's getting them to kill themselves. But, you know, th- they have their place, and they are good movies. That's not the traditional slasher movie, though. Halloween's the one that started that genre. Yeah, it, true. It was more of a psychological slasher film. So. And Saw, I mean, Saw is a good movie to say. The first one, yeah. Know, the first one, yeah. You know, those are all good to say. I mean, obviously, my top five in no particular order. Halloween is a, is on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gothica is a phenomenal psycho thriller. And that's with Holly Berry. Um, I don't know if I've seen that. And Brittany Murphy, I think her name is. Uh, 30 Days of Night. One oh, of my favorites. I forgot about that. That one's a good one. One of my favorites. Uh, what did I say? Halloween, Gothica, Thirty Days of Night. Um, I mean, they weren't really scary. Uh, American Werewolf in London. That yeah, was a good oh, one. That that was that was not a good to be one. confused with American Werewolf in Paris. The sequel sucked. Right, but the first one was good, and then. Uh, Probably the most terrified I've been. Uh, well, nah, that that's not really a good one. But the original Nightmare on Elm Street was was fairly yeah. good. Uh, but when Freddy wasn't a comical comical character, right? Um, but yeah, those would be mine. Are we all right? So now we're going to football. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the National Football League. I don't even know what to say about the AFC West, bro. I mean, I do know what to say. It's the Chiefs and everybody else. My team sucks, and I wanted my team to suck. There's no secret there. They suck so bad, yet they're in second place. It's killing me. It's killing me. 
if my team is in second place, that tells you how bad this division is. The Chargers, everybody's paper champion every year that doesn't really do anything, they suck worse than the Raiders. And then there's the Broncos. Yeah, I'm not even going to mention them. I'll put a YouTube channel link in here for y'all. You, you want to see you see a Broncos fan just go into madness. That dude is hilarious. Yes, he is. <laughs> um. All right, the Broncos did win over the Packers. Good for them. The Chargers, they lost. They were hanging with the Chiefs for a half. But uh, they, reality they set hold, in. They hung with the Chiefs all the way through shit the third quarter. Of, you know, I mean, it was a one score game until we scored in the what last four or five minutes. Uh, that's true. But it didn't feel like that y'all were in jeopardy of losing the game to me. Um, They'd get the ball back and go three and out. They'd get the ball back and move down the field and then stall. So, but we did the same thing. It was an offensive explosion in the Kansas second City. Quarter. Kansas City did what Kansas City usually does. At some point, there's going to be an offensive explosion on uh, a series or two. You've got I mean, so many they, weapons. But there was an offensive explosion for both teams in the second quarter. Yeah. And then after halftime, it just turned into a defensive battle. So yeah. it was like two ga- two different games, and both teams adjusted well, I thought. Um, I think the only difference was is we scored uh, – I, I think it went field goal, field goal, touchdown, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that we were up, what, 24-17 at halftime, roughly. And then yeah. we finally got that last score in the fourth quarter to go up 31-17, make it look worse than what it actually was. True. Um, I thought Chargers played okay. I mean, just I'm with you though. I never, I wasn't worried about us losing. Um, yeah. So there you go. I mean, but Chargers gave us the best fight so far of the other. You know, I guess we only played Denver. So yeah, and the Raiders we'll sweep them. The Raiders weekend. did what the Raiders do. Uh, Josh McDaniels decided that you know the rookie quarterback that was looking good in training camp. No, we're not going to start him. We're going to start Brian Hoyer. You know, the guy who's had 12 NFL starts and lost all 12 games in his last 12, had seven touchdown passes and eight interceptions in his last 12. But we're going to start him. How'd that work out for you? They won, didn't they? No, they no, lost. They, they got lost. beat by the Bears. That's they right. got beat by the Bears. The Broncos won. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so... And not only I'm was sorry. that, yeah. you know, everybody's like, hey, the Bears starting quarterback's not playing this week. A Division II quarterback, a walk-on, for oh. Christ's sake, came and beat them. He was nails, boy. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, all in all that. And, that and the just... whole time, though, I was so happy. I was like, we're going to get rid of this coach. We're going to get rid of this coach. And then Saint, the Chargers got beat. And I'm like, oh, no. And then I looked at the standings. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I thought the Chargers were better than this. We're game up on the Chargers. How is that possible? They had their bye week. Damn. That means we're still in second place. We can't get rid of. I need to be dead last. And I, I give me high oh, draft. That's not gonna, you, would, you are not going to beat the Broncos <laughs> to be at the basement of this league. Sorry. <laughs> not going to happen. Isn't that crazy, folks, how we're saying that no matter how bad my team is, we're still not going to be the worst? No. I'm, I feel like uh, I'm in purgatory. We're going to suck, but not enough to get rid of the coach. He's running this team into the ground. Yeah, I would I would, I would, would say that um, the, the organization stinks from, from we, the top to the bottom. We averaged 23 points per game last year. He said it wasn't good enough. He got rid of Carr, got Garoppolo, who hasn't played a full game. Well, he played a full game the first game he played, but he had an injured toe and went out in one game. He didn't play last week. Um, I expected it to be week eight before he missed some time. 
not week six and seven. But hey, I digress. Oh, by the way, we're only averaging 17 points a game this year. Mm, okay. We shouldn't have touched the offense. It was the defense that needs work. Talk to me about offenses and defensive in this league. Um, well, my argument for that I was going to have for the defense kind of went because the defensive, uh, the offensive kind of uh, exploded this past week in the NFL. But before that, I was listening to a podcast and the guy had a very good point that I just wanted to share, you know, because the offense for the last few years in the NFL have been miles ahead of NFL defenses um with the rule changes and things like that um but the defensive players now that are being drafted in the NFL have been playing these rules since high school mm -hmm. so they're already accustomed to how the offenses are run nowadays and so they're able to close the gap quicker competitively i thought it was a pretty neat point and then this week comes and the offenses start exploding. I'm like, well, maybe not. Except for the ones that you would think, what happened to Buffalo? Uh, who'd they lose to? They lost to the Patriots. I yeah. mean, it was at New England. It's a division game. Don't ever be surprised when a, when a division team beats another division team. Like if the Raiders, the Chiefs, or the Broncos were to beat Kansas City any time this year, you really can't be that surprised. They're a division team. You know, the the, the floor is going to drop out from us, you know, just destroying the division, you know, every year. We're, I don't think we lost any division game last year. <clears throat> and I think the last time we lost a division game was against the Chargers. Yeah. I think in Patrick it, Mahomes' tenure, he's only lost five division games. You lost two years ago to the Chargers and the Raiders. And right. The Raiders was like a one-point game, and you destroyed us the next time you played us. The Chargers you lost at the end of the season when you didn't run your starters because you knew you were in the playoffs. So, Still yeah. a loss, though. Still a loss. We're talking about what happened to the Bills, you know? Yeah, that's I right. Gi I, I give a lot of credit to um, Belichick, you know? Um, you know, it's, they were due, they were due for one. They needed the win. And I think that this just may not be Buffalo's year. Mm. Maybe the league has caught back up to Buffalo a little bit. You know, when I look at it, you know, the bills, the Bengals, they were doing things to stay relevant to the chiefs. You know, the chiefs have been the upper echelon of the AFC for the past five years. Right. Okay? So they were doing things and making moves to stay relevant, to be competitive with the Chiefs. Yeah. The Chiefs, since the loss to Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl, that would be Super Bowl 55. Mm -hmm. Since that loss, they have reinvented themselves every year. 2021, they lost to the Bengals in the AFC championship game 2022 season, they traded away uh, Tyreek Hill got all those draft choices. Those draft choices panned out, won the Super Bowl. this year. Now I go back uh, the division uh, uh, was it the, yeah, the wild card or no, did we have, did we have a bye last year? We only yeah. played two. Yeah, so the division round, we played the Jaguars. Orlando Brown uh, let the defensive guy come through, busted up uh, my man's ankle. He played through that busted ankle all the way to the Super Bowl victory. This year, we replaced our two tackles, which, man, you can tell the difference. And we don't have that sturdy uh receiver out there yet you know now we made the move for to bring hardman back which is going to bring some stability to that wide receiver room 
Rice is turning in to be a pretty decent uh, number two option to Travis, uh, Travis Kelsey. So, you know, and then our defense is playing lights out. We're number two in the league, the Chiefs defense. And, you know, they have not allowed – now, they have not allowed any opponent to score over 20 points, with the exception of Detroit, which scored 21. Mm-hmm. But technically, they only scored 14 because they had the pick six. True. So their defense is playing lights out, and nobody's talking about them. That's what you want. That's oh, what you yeah. want, though. And once once our receiver room clicks, which they looked pretty decent the other day, but, you know, I'm going to know more when we play Miami in a couple of weeks, and then we have the bye, and I think we come back and play Philadelphia on Monday night. Uh, now, now back know. up to that Miami game. Mm-hmm. It's in Germany, right? Yes. Who's the designated home team? Kansas City. Okay. And and I guess it really doesn't mean as much as it used to in the past because we have a 17 game season. When it was a 16 game season, you would lose a home game. That means you'd have seven home games and basically nine road games. But now it doesn't really matter because of the uneven number. You still got eight and eight and then one in another country. Um, I don't know if that's accurate because with the, I, I believe this year we have the extra road game because last year we had mm. the extra home game. Okay. So I think this year we actually have seven home and the rest of them. And then the one in, in, uh, Germany. Germany. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm double checking here. I'm just counting them up real quick. Uh, one, two. Three, four. That one doesn't count. Five, six, seven. All right. We do have eight home games. So technically, I guess last year we didn't. So technically, this would have been the ninth home game. This would have been our extra home game. So it doesn't affect us this year. Okay. But, you know, if it was next year, you know, it would. So, you know, go figure. It doesn't really matter. Like, I'm not as worried about the Dolphins as I was three weeks ago. No, because the Dolphins, uh, I, mean, I mean, and it's not even the way Buffalo dismantled them. It's the way the Eagles did it. I mean, but the Eagles didn't really dismantle them, you know, because that was also just a, that was 17-17 going into the end of the Yeah, I guess dismantle is a poor choice of words. What I would actually say is, they adapted to Miami's style of offense, and they, they did were not able let them to run the ball. That was the difference. Oh, they established that up front. Yeah. If Miami cannot run the ball, all that other BS they do is pretty irrelevant. Because Tyreek still got his. Well, he got eighty yards. He got a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, it was very pedestrian compared to what he's been doing this year. Mm-hmm. And I have no doubts that when he plays Kansas City, he's gonna get his. I have no doubts in that. We just need a few stops. I don't, I'm not scared of the Dolphins defense. Mm-mm. This, but I, I do see this being, you know, a fairly high scoring game, you know, 35, 32, something, you know, as of right now, but we're still two weeks out on that one. Who do y'all have next? Uh, we play at Denver uh, Sunday afternoon. So we're going to finish. Who do y'all up. have next? Denver. This Sunday afternoon. I know you're in Denver. Who are you playing? Well, we're supposed to be playing Denver Broncos, supposedly. They still we're play football in Denver? To. They still suit up. I don't know if they play. Well, they did play last week and beat the Packers. You'd have a better chance of losing that game if you played Colorado. Nah. Colorado would suck, too. Yeah, but we um, beat Denver. And yeah, they, so did we already. That doesn't but, mean nothing. But they had all, the all offseason talking. We're finally going to break through. There won't be a seventh game in a row. You're not going to beat it. Okay. We well, beat we're about you to make broke this, as Jimmy Garoppolo. We're about to make this 17 straight victories against Denver. That's got to be demoralizing. They're in the team. That's a full season. 
Damn, that means they could play you guys. Uh, if you're a Denver fan out there, they could play y'all for an entire season every week, and you never win a game. That's yep. that's horrible. Undefeated. Say what you will. At least my team will get a win in there, drive the bus around the stadium, and then get smashed the next week. But you know, we'll get a win in there. Right. Uh, the Bears play at the Chargers Sunday night. Chargers will win. The, they'll get back on track. And the Bears are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. No. Uh, the Bears, I mean, I don't know. I, I almost want to pick the Bears just out of spite. But this is more of a pick them game. Um, if we were actually keeping track of our picks, you know, then this would mean something. But I, I'm going to go ahead and say the Bears beat the Chargers. Especially if I, I'm, that Division I'm still 2 quarterback plays. I'm going to go with the Chargers still. I mean, wait, is it in Los Angeles? It is. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I'm definitely going to go with the Chargers then. Um, <laughs> and then Monday night, the game of the week. Trash. The Las Vegas Raiders versus the Detroit Lions. Now, in our group text, somebody said this was a bad football game. I don't think it that was is. that was Kevin. It, it's it's not bad per se, but um, we see what Baltimore did to Detroit, but the Raiders ain't going to do that. No, nobody's going to do D Detroit like that. Detroit just happened to have a bad day. Detroit yeah. is a still a decent team. They're still going to make the playoffs. They probably still will win their division. I think there's uh, just enough yeah. talent for Vegas to stay in the game, but they'll lose by 10. Depends who's quarterbacking. Garoppolo's supposed to be back. If Garoppolo plays, I suspect it to be a closer game. If he does not, I think it'll be the opposite of what Baltimore did to Detroit. Exactly. Detroit will do that to the Raiders. I, I would say that. Uh because, because, hell, think, Chicago just did it to us. I think, no, Chicago did not beat you that bad. It was 31 to, like, 17, dude. That's the same score as the Chargers, that we beat the Chargers, but that score doesn't mean that they that we kicked the Chargers' ass all game. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the difference. Y'all played close for three quarters, and then, you know, you pulled ahead. Mm -hmm. When we lost 31 to 17, against the Bears, they blew us out. We only had six on the board. The rest were garbage points at the end. Different. They they let off the gas at the end. I want, I'm trying to see what this, what the score was here. 30 to 12. So yeah, okay. I guess. See, we didn't even have 17. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get, okay. Yeah, you guys, yeah. Because they were, it was 21 to 3 going into the fourth quarter. I digress. Yeah, y'all did get your eyes ass whooped. I apologize. Sorry for giving you false hope there. You can give me false hope. I mean, I'm I'm man enough to admit I'm in an abusive relationship with the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, uh. And see, and and uh it was shit 35 to nothing before uh Detroit even kicked the field goal, so yeah, that, that I don't, was embarrassing. Uh, so, and, and 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 that coach will will have his team ready. They are not. Oh yeah, I think I think they're gonna I think they're gonna bounce back and have a very good game. And unfortunately, for Raiders fans, they're gonna take it out on on the Raiders. It is what it is. I, I need them losses. Stack them L's. Hashtag fire Josh McDaniels. Get us out of second gonna, place. Get us out of second place. It's not going to happen, bro. You're going to be stuck with him, I think. That's just now. So you sad. did send me that that article of five potential replacements. Yes. I just don't see any of them doing any better. Um. Again, I go back two years ago. We had an interim coach that did better. That's a little bit, you can't, you, again, yes, you did better. You squeaked into the playoffs. Um, but I think you have to put the totality of that season together. The Raiders had a chip on the shoulder because of what happened to Gruden. 
So it was an us against the world mentality that year. But a a good coach will create a chip for them and not just ho hum it. But if he but if he was so good, somebody else would have signed him. I don't know. Mark Davis hurried up and got him. I don't know. I mean who? Oh, I'm talking. Oh no, no! I thought you were talking about um, McDaniel's. No, obviously everybody thought he was so good. That's why Davis hired him. But if Masaccio well, was so good, somebody else would have picked him up as a head coach, not a special teams coach, which is what he is. That's true. There's only been one decent special teams coach that I can think of, and that's Harbaugh over in Baltimore. Yeah, I can't think of another head coach that has done very well. I mean, I could be missing somebody, but I just. Well, I'm sure I there's think, probably some out there, but. Um, I I th- I think. I I don't think there's anybody out there right now, that's going to put you in a better situation. Well, I look and at I it like don't this, believe. Though. I don't believe that. McDaniels is a bad coach per se. I think he is a bad leader. And that's where I'm going with it. Because if you look at these good teams, they take on the identity of their head coach. The Chiefs are Andy Reid. The plays he draws up, they run to damn near perfection. The Lions... They are a scrappy team that's on the rise because that's the way Dan Campbell said he was going to do it when he, when he uh, was introduced as that head coach. Um, Right. I mean, if you look at all the respectable coaches, win or lose, good or bad, they still have an identity for their team. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They suck on offense, but they're still in this thing because that defense is cold. And they are a hard-nosed team that plays hard-nosed football, which is what um, Mike Tomlin wants them to play. Now, I'm pretty sure he's his hair is slowly going gray because of the offense, and he wishes they could play better. But he's still getting what he wants out of that defense. It's, it's all about identity. The Raiders have no identity right now. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they have an identity. Oh, yeah, I'm done talking about my team now. I'm just saying they do have an identity. Um I just, you know, I you cannot um discount McDaniel's um success in New England. Granted, he was not the head of it. Okay. He followed leader Belichick. No, Belichick rule with iron fist or whatever. But offensively gifted play caller McDaniels is. But was he though? If well, yes. You have How'd to they do give last him, year in New England. He wasn't with them last year in New England. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. The, I'm, I meant the year before. What, Brady's last year? No, Brady was uh, in the, the Tampa one Bay year, organi- organization. So so Mac's last year or Mac's first year or second yeah. year or whatever it was? It was, it was this, his first this year. This is McDaniel's third year, right? Or yeah. is it his second? This is his second year with the Raiders. Okay, so he had Mac's first two years. They were competitive. They weren't trash, you know, of the bottom of the heap. But Well, I'm just saying how much of that was him when they were winning all those championships. I mean, I'm not saying that he had 50% success, but he was he was a piece of said puzzle. Obviously, Andy Reid is not winning these two Super Bowls without Patrick Mahomes. Not happening. Otherwise, he would have had Super Bowls with uh, Donovan Alex McNabb. Smith and Donovan McNabb and all those guys, okay? Yeah. So it, it, it helps that you have a generational, once-in-a-lifetime person at that position on your team. Okay. Yeah. So yes, Brady, 
Brady is going to get the majority of that uh, uh, credit, yes. Mm -hmm. But that is him executing the calls that McDaniel's calling. So, And it didn't hurt, too, that he went to another place and still won it all without them. Who, Brady? Yeah. Yeah, but... I'm I'm strictly talking about McDaniel's. You know, mm -hmm. Brady again is he is he's in a class all by himself. Nobody's touching him. Um however, you have to give just like you have to give Charlie Weiss credit for the earlier parts of t or uh, Tom's success, mm -hmm. you have to give because go back to when Josh left and went to Denver and blew it, right? Yeah. New, Eng New England wasn't relevant while he was gone. He comes back to New England and poof, they drop off another three Super Bowls. So he has, he had a, uh, a good hand in that. I'm thinking that he doesn't, that he doesn't have a grasp on how to delegate said, uh, he has his hands too much in it. Like, he needs somebody there to help him manage the team, which is, you know, it seems like he's trying to do everything. So I think if, that if we if can agree that there's something, may not be able to pinpoint what it is, something that he's either doing or not doing that he needs to either pull back or push forward on to, to put that stamp on this team. I, yes. I, I think there's a lot of stuff he needs to be doing differently. Um, but, you know, uh, and that's a big but, he needs to surround himself with experienced coaches. Um, I'll go back to Dick Vermeil when he was here, and he pretty much hired an offensive coordinator and Al Saunders and said, Psh, this is yours, run it. You know, uh, I forget who was our defensive coordinator at that time. Um, was it Herm? No, 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 no. Okay. Herm was our head coach before Dick Vermeil got there. Okay, I, I no, I me. lie. Herm, Herm took over after Dick Vermeil, but I think Herm, Herm was not on the coaching staff. Herm was on the coaching staff with Marty, but he wasn't on the coaching staff. That's right, because at that Vermeule. time Herm went because he Tampa, was coaching didn't he? the Jets. Uh, he was coaching the Jets. Okay. He was the head coach of the Jets. Uh, Herm was, um, but. He surrounded himself with all, even the offensive line was an ex head coach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he, he surrounded and let them do their thing. And then he just had to worry about down and distance, timeouts, accepting penalties, not, you know, the, you know, that type of thing. Let, right. the, let the team do the same, which is, which is what Belichick does. Belichick isn't in there, you know, overstepping his son's boundaries when it comes to the defense. He's not over there telling the offensive coordinator what place to call. He's letting them do their thing and then making it, they'll have to come up with a, with a game plan and then he'll change it. You know, well, I don't like this. You know, I don't think this is a good call against this team. Let's change this and do this. Right. But for the most part, it's their thing. McDaniels doesn't do that. McDaniels wants all the credit and none of the blame. Yeah. I mean, it's just some things that stuck bad with me because one, he's like, I understand I made some mistakes in Denver. I'm not that person anymore. Yet I'm seeing the same things that I saw in Denver. And then after a bad loss, he's like, well, it's just about execution. If I call a play, it should be executed a certain way. N no, if it doesn't work the first or second time, don't call that play again. He's he's in his own head. Let's say I got to disagree with you because even Andy Reid does that. How many times have we seen these freaking, uh, uh, especially this last game? How many times have we seen them, them, uh, oh, them little slot, you know, where they come running behind the deal and he flips it forward and they get caught behind the line, you know, that type of thing. They did like three or four times to to Tony this past game, you know, it things that okay, this is a good play at this point. It didn't work. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Andy Reid does it too. Every player, every NFL does that. And yes, players do need to execute. 
However, it is his responsibility to put them in good positions to be able to execute said play. So it's a little bit of both. Yeah, it is. I, I do think, though, that more often than not, Andy's going to make the right call compared to uh, Josh. I mean, yeah, track record would probably say that, but some of these, like, you know. And, and I want to allude to something that you said earlier, leader of men. Those guys on Kansas City's roster, they will walk through a wall for Andy. Yeah, yeah they love Andy. Yeah. I mean, my God, he's doing commercials with his quarterback. Yeah, they must but have Andy, a good relationship. But Andy was established. Everybody wanted to win one for Andy. Yeah. He had been in the league forever and a day. McDaniels has got to, you know, which is probably why Belichick is so, because, you know, at the time, Belichick was the bee's knees and everybody wanted to win for Belichick, you know, type of thing. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's a, it, I, I, I can't just put all the blame on McDaniels, though. I mean, the players are played to play. And yeah. if you're, if you're constantly getting beat, you know, or constantly you can't shed blocks. Uh, you're constantly throwing interceptions. You know, you can't open holes for your running back. You know, the, the coach can only do so much. Now it's up to him to replace talent. Yeah. Which maybe he's not a good talent seeker. But I say all that to say this. The Lions are going to win. It's amazing how we went all the way around that just, just for that. Something that we all already knew. Good thing you can edit. This conversation didn't have to be this long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Who do we get the Broncos playing again? Broncos are playing the chefs. The oh, chefs? That, 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 yeah, the chefs. Who I are think, the chefs? Th that, that boy man. better repaint that end zone. Um, Sucky ass team. Yeah. I feel sorry for Denver right now. But I'm mad, too, because that's going to keep me in second place. I'm going to suspect Chargers. I need y'all to step up. I need the Chargers to win. If I the Chargers go the down, I'm going to be crying all tough. day. Y'all better call me and check on Suicide Watch if the Chargers lose on Sunday. Because... I'm done. Yeah, I digress. I, right, I think the Broncos will play is pretty close, but I still think we'll win. All right. Once again, kids, before we get out of here, here's the deal. In the comments, wherever you're at, wherever you're listening to, wherever you're watching, or you can email us at the Slightly Warped Podcast. I want your goat in every sport, basketball, football, uh, what do we say, golf, tennis. I'm missing one. Baseball. There we, never, we go. We, we never said golf. We never said golf? No, okay, it was football, basketball, boxing, and uh, shit. What was the last one? Was it tennis? Tennis. It was tennis. Yeah, tennis. Well, damn it, let's add golf in there. I know okay, everybody's gonna say Tiger Woods, but you know, I I just I want, give me your goats. I I want to read these on the air next week and see how how they compare to what we come up with. And believe me, we're slightly warped. That's all I'm going to say about that until next week. Show, take us out of here. Hey, thank you for watching. Uh, tell your friends, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you know when we post. Uh, have a happy and safe Halloween um, to all those trick-or-treaters out there. And, uh, you know, tell everybody you love them. Tomorrow's not promised. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.